Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Albedo has always appeared in November to December banners, but he's breaking tradition by coming early this year with an October rerun. He's not really an often talked about character, but with Dendro finally completing our reaction roster, it seems a good time to revisit his relevance as a Geo unit. In this video, I'll quickly discuss Albedo's current state, his pros and cons as a character, and things to consider before pulling him, especially if you're a recent new player. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Opera GX is a web browser made specifically for gamers. I made the switch to Opera GX over 6 months ago and I have not regretted it since. Now, if you're worried about transitioning over to GX because you don't want to start over your bookmarks and browser history, Opera GX has a quick import tool that will carry those over and more. Plus, Chrome extensions can also be used for Opera browsers, so just visit the Chrome Web Store and grab your faves. Another great feature is this accessibility sidebar. I've got my Messenger, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord on it right now. But if you're on other apps like Telegram and WhatsApp, just set the sidebar to display those too. It shows my notifs and reduces my tabs. The GX player brings music straight to the sidebar as well. I've got my YouTube music logged in, but go for Spotify or Apple Music if that's your thing. Then get GX on mobile and connect that to the desktop version for convenient continuity. So download Opera GX for either desktop or mobile through the link in the description and pin comment. Thanks Opera GX for sponsoring. Now back to the video. The thing about Albedo is that, like most of the other characters in his element, nothing much has changed about him since the end of last year. Albedo found a huge boost in damage with his limited time event weapon Cinnabar Spindle and the release of the Husk of Opulent Dreams artifact set, which did reignite players' interest in him then. And when Ito and Goro came out to introduce the Triple Geo Team meta, Albedo found an even better place for his team options. Now, Dendro has allowed a lot of new teams to flourish, but Geo didn't see any new reactions with Dendro and it seems like they never will anymore. So with all the changes, how well does Albedo hold up even now? I am Albedo, Chief Alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. The good news is, Albedo is a safe choice for a flex slot in many teams new and old. That's mostly the way he's been. By virtue of being a Geo unit, but not necessarily being too dependent on other Geo characters like Ito and Goro, Albedo is never a terrible choice for a flex character. He's often not the best for the role, but also not the worst. He's a staple in Geo teams, but has no special synergy with non-Geo characters. This makes him a neutral but versatile unit of sorts. There are a few things in his kit that allow him to be flexible enough. He takes very little on-field time while giving easy yet respectable damage in a large field. The damage dealt also has an area of effect, which makes it especially effective against enemy mobs grouped together. His skill lasts 30 seconds, so you can kind of plop it down and forget about it, and even make AFK teams with it. But if you need to relocate it, its cooldown is also very short, which makes it easy to switch to Albedo in between your other characters and reposition as necessary. Basically, he's very convenient and easy to use. There are some instances where some large enemies can destroy the flower construct but those are uncommon and again, his short cooldown makes it easy to resummon. Note as well that the blossoms won't proc if a shielded enemy isn't taking damage but that's easily resolved by having shield breaking counters. Then, by constantly dealing Geo damage, it's also a constant source of crystallized shields. You probably already know that crystallized shields don't have the best reputation since they're pretty flimsy compared to actual dedicated shields. However, they're still a source of protection, they can minimize interruption, and in the open world, if you don't have a really strong shield unit, they can help you walk away from many battles without any or little damage taken. Additionally, one support utility of his that's often unappreciated is his EM buff. In fact, he's the only Geo character that actually gives an EM buff via his A4 passive talent that will give the entire team 125 EM upon casting his burst. This is a pretty strange ability to see on a Geo unit because you don't really associate EM abilities with Geo. However, that gives him a unique quality and advantage for reaction teams while also buffing his own crystallized shields. Albedo has long been a good choice for many team templates pre-Dendro. 
When Zhongli and Albedo were the two 5-star Geos in the early patches of Genshin, comping them together with various pairs of non-Geos proved to have good synergy. Albedo's damage shines the most when he's in a Geo team though. Goro, who's a staple of Geo teams, really gives him a big buff in defense and Geo damage. Geo Resonance helps boost his Geo damage even more, more so with Zhongli's Geo Resistance Shred. And with fellow Geo teammates, he helps generate particles while being batteried himself. My experiments may be dangerous, but no one gets hurt most of the time. Now, with Sumeru, Geo hasn't really been given anything new due to the lack of reactions with the Denjo element. And with the new Denjo team templates, our Geo roster generally hasn't seen much love or newfound use. Zhongli is the most highly appreciated unit for such teams, thanks to his elemental resistance shred, which includes Denjo resistance, on top of his shielding, of course. This makes Zhongli still a particularly great unit to drive certain teams or keep them alive while buffing damage. But I'd like to give some appreciation for Albedo, and would even say that he is the next best Geo unit to Zhongli that you can slot in Denjo teams. Denjo teams really only need 2-3 to three characters to create the core party members. For example, Quicken teams are really about at least one Electro and one Denjo. In a Hyper Bloom team, it requires Electro, Hydro, and Denjo units to start. The last slots are always a choice of something that won't mess up the team's reaction. Geo is one such element, but Albedo's kit just makes him high on the list. His constant generation of crystallized shields are one added layer of protection, particularly in Bloom and Burgeon teams where you deal damage to yourself. Although these teams really want healers for dedicated shields, to counter this self-damaging mechanic, Albedo's crystallize is at least an added source of comfort. For all Dendro team types, his team-wide 125 EM buff is pretty decent, like a free 4-piece instructor set effect. Given that Dendro reactions love EM, it ends up being helpful for damage. And of course, he pulls his own weight by dealing consistent off-field AoE damage. Separating him from a triple Geo team, a Goro team, or even from just a Geo Resonance team certainly lowers his damage ceiling. But outside of those teams, he remains a safe bet for a flex slot where you need it. Compared to Zhongli's combined shielding and resistance shred utilities, he's not as comfortable of a choice if he's the only Geo unit. But the fact that he contributes respectable damage with very little effort while having those smaller but still valuable utilities of small shields and EM buffing makes him surprisingly able to keep up and be a synergistic candidate for many Dendro teams. The truth of this world. What could it be? Let's also touch on the experience of building Albedo, but also one very unfortunate truth you'll have to deal with if you started playing after his previous banner event and are just pulling him now. Albedo's best artifact build is very straightforward. A full set of the Husk of Opulent Dreams is simply his best in slot. It's so far ahead of his other options that it's highly recommended to just farm this set if you're really investing into his damage. There are other sets whose effects can buff Albedo's teammates, such as Noblesse, Tenacity, of the Millilith and Archaic Petra, which you can put on if you just need a teammate to hold them. I've tried Petra Albedo in teams where at least two other DPSs could benefit from the damage buff, and it's something I've found some success with. But a 4-piece husk with all the right stats is the safest and most optimal option for him as of now. However, that set is somewhat painful to farm. Only the handful of Geo Defense scaling characters actually want it, and they all pretty much want the same stats. And then the domain's like, oh, now you want defense, have some attack. More than that, its domain is shared with the Ocean Hued Clam, an even more niche set. If you don't have Kokomi or plans to build Barbara, this set will likely just end up being fodder or off pieces. The strongbox options have been expanded, but Inazuma artifacts won't be added anytime soon so you have to be prepared to end up spending a lot of time and frustration farming a full husk set in the domain. It is worth it for Albedo, so you'll have to be patient and or lucky enough. Aside from the somewhat inefficient farming experience, perhaps the worst thing that you have to contend with is how his best-in-slot weapon, the Cinnabar Spindle, was a limited-time event weapon that can no longer be acquired. It's a weapon literally made for him, so you'd think it would appear in his reruns, but up to now, it's very uncertain 
uncertain if it's ever coming back. If you're a newer player or just someone who missed that event, it's kind of a sad feeling having Albedo but knowing that his best weapon is out of reach. Personally, I wish they'll add some kind of access to past event content, like it might get added as a fishing reward. I get that the point of those events is that they're limited and exclusive, but I really hope Hoyoverse will seriously consider finding a way to make this weapon accessible. Of course, I want to emphasize that Albedo is perfectly usable with another weapon that is an insane free to play friendly option. Because his next best in slot is Harbinger of Dawn, a 3 star weapon will never run out of. At R5, it performs at par with, if not better than, 5 star options. Even weapons like Jade Cutter, Miss Splitter only achieve similar output as Harbinger of Dawn on him, while being way more expensive. While the Harbinger's amazing crit stats are perfect for Albedo's kit and off field playstyle. Without the Cinnabar Spindle, Albedo really doesn't have any other 5 star signature weapon. In fact, if he did have a true 5 star weapon, that would have a greater chance of reappearing than the Cinnabar Spindle. So if you are pulling for him, just make sure that you're okay with the possibility of never getting his best weapon. Hope that it comes back, but expect it not to anymore. All in all, the simplicity of Albedo's gameplay and his affordable weapon is great for new players, especially if you can already access and farm his artifact domain. Again, he doesn't have much special synergies with non-double Geo or Goro teams, and if you're really concerned about getting meta units, Albedo isn't going to be at the top of your list. But the universality of his kit makes him a friendly pull for players who don't want to fuss much over composing teams since he can fit into many, Dendro teams include. Included. I'll link below my version 2.3 Albedo guide if you want to know his ins and outs, but you'll also see him regularly thrown into the abyss in my recent Denjo related videos. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!